You are listening to a Higher Things production. Higher Things is a 501c3 nonprofit organization whose mission is to make the gifts of Christ Jesus known to youth and young adults through gospel rich content like you are about to hear. Consider joining our supporters who make this ministry possible by donating at higherthings.org slash giving or by clicking the link in the show notes. And now, Higher Things presents The Uncultured Saints with Pastors Eli Leedsow and Harrison Goodman. We should eventually talk about uh, the Gospel of Mark, the seventh chapter. Heaven and Hell, that's a good, that's a good Black Sabbath song too. Oh, we're going to get in trouble, aren't we? Uh, let's talk about traditions and commandments, and so at least if we get in trouble, it will be over the usual. Uh, Mark chapter the four seven. people, the four so, people are not going to like the fact uh, that you, I'm, a, I'm a Black Sabbath fan. Four of them still. Um, now, when the Pharisees gathered to him, being Jesus, uh, with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands properly, holding to the tradition of the elders. And when they came from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions that they observe, such as the washing of cups and pots and copper vessels and dining couches. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And he said to them, well, did I, well, did Isaiah prophecy of you, you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching the doctrines, teaching as doctrines, the commandments of men, excuse me. You leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. This is the word of the Lord. There's a lot here already. We, we can keep Wait, going. I what? know. I know. Okay, fine, fine. No, and where'd he, you stop? Wait, where'd you stop? Uh, I stopped at verse eight. Verse eight. Well, no, finish finish the sub the sub thing. Go all the way to twelve. At there's, least. there's a lot. Okay, okay, fine. Uh, beginning at verse nine, continuing at verse nine. And he, he being, being Jesus, Jesus said to them. You have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. For Moses said, honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, if a man tells his father or his mother, whatever you would have gained from me is Corbin, that is, given to God, then you, are no longer, then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down. And many such things do you do. This is the word of the Lord. This is the word. Thanks be to God. All right. Did you did you tell the folks what we're uh, that is we're in the Gospel of Mark? Mark chapter seven. Maybe you did that. I was going to. All right. So you said there's a lot going on here. This is this is the first time, at least in Mark's gospel, I think. Maybe I'm that Jesus wrong. is really sort of button heads publicly with the Pharisees. I mean, he does it very early on, right? Chapter one, we've already got it happening after his baptism. Uh, we've already got him um, in synagogues making people uh, uh, uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, but this time, at least this is Mark's first time that he kind of expounds upon Jesus's teaching. And again, maybe I'm wrong, but... Like that he's flat out shaming the the, the Pharisees. Not just sort of, here's a teaching that I know you're not going to like, but but like, let's let's actually look at you. Well, right, but I mean, e- even just if you take a look at the other th- the other chapters, there's there's not a lot of for Mark. There's not a lot of uh, Jesus uh, 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 doctrinal teaching moments, right? There's a mm. I'm healing a blind man and teaching at the same point in time, right? Sure, sure. There's that time in which he talks to the uh, the Pharisees uh, who are ridiculing his um, disciples for picking grain on the Sabbath. There's that little bit of teaching mode, but like this one's a long one. Like this one's a, okay, we're actually, I'm going to take the time uh, to, to actually uh, dissect these things because uh, it, it seems to be pretty important to, uh, to what's going on. And again, remember, you got to remember that, that <clears throat> Mark is, is, is writing for, a, for an expressed reason, trying to, to get across a, a certain point in his particular gospel. So that isn't to say that this is the first time that Jesus had ever actually sat down and and done something like this. This is just the first time that Mark is recording it. Right. And the first thing that, that, that we're going to come to then. So like that, that actually then really highlights this particular issue, doesn't it? I would think so. Again, I, I, 
I, you know, we've been doing this for so long uh, that I, I can't remember exactly. But I, I think if this is one of the main ones, one of the first ones, and it, we're talking about clean and unclean, and we're talking about traditions of man versus traditions of God, um, then yeah, if, if this is the one that Mark wants to highlight, um, mm-hmm. then then maybe we should. Uh, uh, he who has ears to hear, uh, let him hear. Right. So I, I think that maybe we can we can sort of narrow in on it just by talking about the traditions uh here's a fun little one though by the way before we get going uh when they're talking about the washing of cups and pots and copper vex- and dining couches dining couches, couches. how do you do that well the word is baptize um so speaking of traditions of men the idea that that you would need to well they to, would submerge the dining couch the whole is what couch they would obviously do. completely underwater yeah they would take it out to the pond or there everybody in uh in uh judea had uh, uh an underground swimming pool mm-hmm. um and mm-hmm. that's where they would take their dining couch and they would submerge it three times daily no, or weekly. Uh, no, no. It's not that guy's is wash. Yeah, they, they they probably like. Oh, you spilled some Kool Aid on there. I told you not to. Uh, I told you to keep that in the kitchen. Uh, they probably had kids. Um, so this this word tradition though, because we're gonna we're gonna come to something like this. Like, how do you baptize? Does it matter? Um, is a tradition of men a good thing, a bad, or a bad thing? Just like well, if nature. you ask if you ask Tevia from Fiddler on the Roof, it's a very good thing. There's a song um, about it. <laughs> it's a whole song about it. It's a song that goes throughout the whole musical. <laughs> um, it depends on how you look at it. But it also, so this is the interesting thing here. Um, uh, in, in doing the uh, kind of the study for this, right? You've got Jesus who is expressly saying, like explicitly saying, uh, the, the things of washing, baptizing the cups and the dining couches those are traditions of 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 man. You guys yeah. have made them up. Doing a little bit of the study, I the the Pharisees didn't think so. So the Pharisees, and this is the interesting thing, because the Pharisees wouldn't say like, "Hey, you could uh, you could go back to Leviticus twenty eight forty two and see that uh, uh, you have to." Uh, Here's uh, my chapter on couch washing. Right. Exactly. Uh, they would never say that, but uh, I believe it's in Joshua or maybe uh, maybe it's Deuteronomy. I can't remember where, but it, it, it's expressing how uh, the elders of, of, of the church uh, uh, had uh, had the full knowledge of God's law and uh, would express that to the people. And so that was kind of understood as this this oral way of uh, uh, the, the oral tradition of expressing the, the, the traditions down to the people. Um, and God's law down to the people. And so the Pharisees um, would say that, uh, yes, you're not going to find this in the Torah or the Pentateuch, right? Um, mm-hmm. But this has been our oral tradition since uh, time before last. And it is God's law. So the mm-hmm. baptizing of the cup is God's law. It's not just a human tradition. And I think that's the issue. Because you'd have the Pharisees thinking that, that these are actually, no, no, no. These were handed down from our uh, super duper great grandfathers, meaning they got them from Yahweh, meaning uh, they're God's law. And then you have Jesus saying, no, that's not the case. And you actually would even have the Sadducees saying the same thing. Because the Sadducees, they said, if if it's not written in the Pentateuch, then it's it's not of God. Um, and so they would even say, um, no, you don't have to submerge your couch. It's okay, guys. Um, but yeah, this is this is kind of the, the war in factions. So I kind of took us off on a tangent. Um, going back to your original question, are these things, are traditions of man uh, important? Are they, are, no, not, not important. Are they inherently good or inherently bad in and of themselves? Neither. I, I'm going to push on that. I actually think the traditions of, of men are, are inherently good. Um, they can be they can be misemployed, they can be misappropriated, and, and they can they can be set out of order and over and against things that they should not like the traditions of God. But the traditions of men in, in so many places are, are just actually foundational to society. Um, it, it is it you know it, it it's the place where you get kicked out of the library because like it it. it 
there's there's not a law that says you can't wear your pants as your shirt and your shirt as your pants, but the traditions of men are, are important. Um, yeah, you can't places- do that. You can't do it at a library. <clears throat> You're right. You could wear a dress in a public library now, though. Only if you read to kindergartners. Um, but um, I, I think that there there are actually places where you could even talk about what what is sort of traditionally masculine or traditionally feminine and how those those are actually intentionally being challenged today and whether or not that has sort of helped us as a society get along cohesively or is that maybe caused some bit of a kerfuffle um and recognize like there, there are a lot of just normal things that we do uh that that are not necessarily codified in law but are actually helpful for society to to function well okay so I, I think we're probably we might be talking around each other, or I think we're or, talking about two different things, or two I, different I really things, do. right? So I, so I want to get to yours too. No, I'm so kind of... I would I would agree with you. Uh, the things of natural law, the things of how a society runs, uh, we naturally will have traditions that speak to those uh, absolute truths, right? Mm-hmm. And so when there is the absolute truth of there uh, are males and there are females, there are men and there are women. Society will make traditions uh, to uh, to speak to those truths uh, through dress, through actions, through this, through that, right? Is and that all of those the things that are important to, to right. yeah. And all of those things are, I would agree, they are uh, inherently good, and it just naturally uh, we do them. I don't think that's what's happening. Here. I don't either. That's that's what I'm saying though. Like so so because it's it's easy to paint with really broad strokes with this and sort of say, well, it it's not in the book, so I can do what I want, or or there's not against the law, so like who 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 actually cares? But but there are there's a, a nature that that exists inside of of creation where where we do follow traditions to honor people. We we do follow traditions to show respect. We we follow traditions to to uh to normalize the things that we want to see promoted or to challenge the things that we want to see taken down. Um traditions are are useful things. But but I think it's when we we actually start to um start to to set them outside of their role or to ascribe to them things that were not given to them. That, right. that it really becomes problematic. And, and this is where you're going too, with, with the idea of, of sort of washing the pots and the pans. And the Pharisees are, are, are right to want to cling to this if, if this is a way to, to promote something. But it's what they're tying to it that, that makes me really uncomfortable. Well, and that's just it. And, and at risk of, 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 of calling uh, uh, our, our, uh, uh, the Roman Catholics uh, uh, Pharisees, which I, I don't want to uh, completely uh, do that, um, but you do, you, you do kind of have the, the, the danger is, and it's not just Rome. It wouldn't even just be Eastern Orthodox. The danger would uh, maybe even be within the Luther church, uh, right. the LCMS. Um, the danger would be the traditions that we do. Um, are they good? Some of them very well might be. Um, and it might actually promote good order within the church. And there might actually be zero reasons to ever change said traditions. But are they from God? Right, exactly. That's the difference. And and you can sit there and say, no, we do X. And it's been our tradition. There's no reason to change it. We're going to keep it as is. And to change it would actually uh, cause a lot of consternation. So we're not going to. There's a difference between saying that and we do X because God said so. And that's what the Pharisees are saying here. The Pharisees are saying, uh, we do X, right? We wash our hands. Not th- Guys, there's nothing about germs here, right? This is, they, they didn't under, there was no knowledge of germs, no microscopes. They, they didn't have this, uh, we're washing our hands to get them uh, 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 biologically clean. It was, we're washing our hands to get them ceremonially clean. Right. So that we can eat, because if we don't, this was the argument, and we'll see this later on with with uh, 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 in in chapter seven, where Jesus starts talking about what defiles a person. Right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, if you have the the idea, the thought process is my hand is ceremonially unclean. I pick up a turkey sandwich and I eat the turkey sandwich, which is. Uh, uh, in regards to the Israelites, it's kosher. It, it's got, uh, it, there's no unclean animals there. Everything's fine. But because my ceremonially unclean hands have touched it, then it is unclean. Now I've defiled myself as I'm eating it. And now I am inside and out unclean. And this is all the word of the Lord. That's what the Pharisees are saying. 
That's the issue at hand. I'm not, I'm not buying it because, and, and, and from a number of reasons, but the, the problem is, um, isn't just sort of the, the, the logical fallacy. It, it's what you think you can fix by it. Um, because you're, you're right. Jesus is going to come and say, you guys are already defiled from the heart. It doesn't matter what you put into your mouth. It doesn't matter if you haven't washed your hands, uh, ceremoniously before eating the turkey sandwich, please do be uh, actually use soap, but, but like, you, you can see it, but if, if you think that you can save your soul by baptizing a, a pot and a couch, that's the issue. Like, it, it's because you're, you're leaning into rituals of men, setting them above not just the rituals of God, but the, the promises of God. Now, the, the very gospel itself becomes secondary to the things that you think that you can do to save yourself. A, right. And if this is the case, not only do these traditions then become weaponized, not only against each other, but against the very commandments of God, but they become such a false hope because now the things that are actually there to help you and bind together your society are, 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 are now utterly set aside. Right. And so what the Pharisees are doing, and, and they would, uh, uh, I think they, they would readily uh, agree with this, like all of these traditions of men that they're saying, that they're saying are been, have been handed down um, uh, by, they, they would say by God, but it, it is them building a fence around God's law in order to uh, make sure that nobody transgresses God's law, Right. Um, and so, and then they become these, the, this fence becomes so important as well, uh, that, uh, just jumping over the fence becomes sinful jumping over the fence. You're transgressing God's law and you're not being as holy or as clean or as purified as you should be, because now you're eating the sandwich, uh, without having washed your hands. Now you're sitting on the fainting couch without, uh, uh having it baptized, right? Um, but but here's the thing, though. It's not just the law that you're fencing off, but even even the promises. Um, so let's go ahead right. and push on the, the baptizing couch um, and, and, and full on poke at the Baptists who would say that although baptism gives you nothing from God, it, it is wholly your commitment to him. You have to be fully submerged or it doesn't count. Right. Um, so now now we've so removed ourselves from the idea of baptism that it doesn't even matter what it does. You just have to make sure that you're doing it the right way. And, Correct. and for us, it's, it's a very simple thing because baptism is, is washing. You take water and the, the words, the triune formula that you're given in the name of the father, son, and the Holy spirit. Um, and then you can recognize submerging is really cool imagery. The tradition there is actually pretty neat. I I'm, I'm a fan of the, the submerging tradition of men because it points to us just what is happening in baptism. Old Adam is drowning and, and, and dying. And, and it is a, a violent thing. Um, it, it is a complete covering you in, in the promises of God. That's beautiful. But if you are so intent on getting that man-made tradition just so that you have lost sight of the fact that baptism now saves you, First Peter 3, you, you, done, you done messed up. Right. Right. And, and I like how you put that because... <clears throat> Because on Mount Sinai, and we always think of Mount Sinai, right? And, and again, this is where uh, God's law is being handed down to the people. And so the, the, the Pharisees would inevitably get you to Mount Sinai, right? Um, that that uh, all of these traditions are somehow connected to that place. Um, the problem is we always think of um, Mount Sinai as and only as a place of God's law. Because Ten Commandments and Charlton Heston and all of that sort of stuff, right? Sure. <sighs> Charlton Heston, kids, is a really old guy um, uh, that was in a bunch of movies like uh, Planet of the Apes and stuff. Um, and he did the Ten Commandments. He was Moses, just so you know. Mm -hmm. um, anywho. <laughs> Thanks for Claire. It's been a few years since that movie has been a thing. <laughs> it's been a couple. I think, I, I bet you, on regular TV... Uh, TV is this uh, this box uh, that you would have in your living room. Uh, back in the day, you'd have rabbit ears, uh, and you would try. And you could only get like three or four stations, kids. Um, but I bet on regular TV. Um, uh, I think it's uh, I think it's on uh, uh, during Holy Week. I bet they still show the Ten Commandments. No, it's it's during Passover, dude. <laughs> I guess it would be. <laughs> That's. <laughs> Oh, that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> I grew up watching it. Um. <laughs> That's a lot. Yule Brenner. Uh. 
he's he's but anyway uh, Pharaoh. keep going keep going i don't know what i'm talking about what was i what was i talking about you explain oh. the box uh mount sinai right we always think that it's just the law but like you were saying if if we're putting a fence around god's law so that we don't transgress god's law uh uh then we're also putting a fence really sensibly uh, that's not even a word i don't know what i was trying to say there uh, uh uh around god's gospel um and Mount Sinai has the gospel as well. Like, I think we forget that that he's Moses is up there for 40 days. Like, there's a lot that they didn't talk just get about. rules for that long. What's that? You didn't, didn't just get rules for that long. No, no. Um, well, they he, he did, but not just, but like he got the dimensions and the uh and and the uh, he was given the pattern of sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins of the tabernacle of the sacrifices for the forgiveness of sins exactly right he was shown he was shown the tabernacle in heaven i think he I was wonder shown wonder if that looked like a cross yeah exactly <laughs> Just... perhaps perhaps it was the pre-incarnate christ is there a um, lamb slain before the foundation of the world somewhere ex- yeah know. exactly so he was shown this gospel sort of stuff. so again i think we oftentimes forget um that uh the gospel was was shown given uh on mount sinai as well um but if you're going to put a hedge around uh, uh around that so that you don't uh trans and, and all of your focus is on um i've got yeah. a wall this cup and spoon and fainting couch correctly enough so that I don't need the gospel that's, that's hidden within. Um, well, then you got it all wrong. But, but it's, it's what happens in its absence too, that that actually becomes more profane. Um, because now not only are you setting yourself apart from the gospel and apart from hope, and you're trying to live by something that can't save you, uh, but but you actually recognize how much power is inside of tradition. That's why people war over them. Um, but if you can if you can label the tradition as as of an authority, then you can weaponize it, and, and that that's eventually how we'll, we'll get to the next section. And I think we do have time. Um, but but Jesus actually, as he's contrasting the, the the traditions of men and God, he says, "Look at this. What what you guys are doing? You actually are forcing your parents to suffer under the name of giving to God, even though yeah. God is the one who gave you the fourth commandment." No, that's I, we got like five minutes. Let's let's get there because I know we're not going to get to the Syrophoenician woman, um, but we're uh, we'll uh, we'll lead Fun into that, that because it's important. Um, but uh, what verse fourteen? Huh? Do you want me to read it? Oh, you, you want to just go right? So I, I want to do I want to do verse seven, verse nine though. The, the idea that there's more. Let, let's just let this be the tradition one. You can sing your song at the end, and <laughs> so we're not going to jump into fourteen. Right. No, I don't want to. I don't want to. That'll be next time. Okay. We don't want to go too quickly through this book that goes quickly through. <laughs> All right, good. Let's let's draw out. Draw no, go go out go go. They, no, 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 no. First nine. Fight. First nine. First nine. Do it. You have you have people actually being uh being hurt by the traditions that are are the very things that are supposed to hold the society together. Uh you have you have people who are being harmed under the name of God, the very same God who who bled and died for them. Uh so what's when, the core bond then? The, I, I the, the the thing is that, that that it would be given to God, that it would be tied to the church. Yeah, it's just it's it's just an offering, it, and and Old Testament wise, I think you hear it all the time, like in Leviticus and Deuteronomy. Um, and I think of the main places that you get to hear it, and it's always an offering given, but it's an offering always given to to God. So it's it it, it cannot a, a korban. I'm probably saying that wrong. Uh, cannot be given to uh to people, right? Like a king or whatever. So. The thing that's like you said, the thing that's going around here is all these these Pharisees are saying, "Okay, I am dedicating all of this stuff to God and calling it korban, mm-hmm. which is a good thing because it's a dedication of this to God." But as soon as that's done, it can't be used for any other purpose. Mm-hmm. You're dedicating it to God, and what Jesus is saying here is, "You guys are so proud of yourself." Because you are dedicating everything you have as Corban to God, and now uh, your uh, dad, uh, who is elderly and can't take care of himself, uh, you don't have the money to help him. 
do you have the money uh, for the uh, 24-hour uh, 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 nurse that he needs? Um, but you say, don't worry, don't worry, Dad. Uh, I gave that money uh, to Corbon. That's, see? Yeah, but but I mean, you can actually see this put in place today too, though. Um, the, the idea of, of, of Christians under the guise of holiness doing harm to their neighbor. You can see this this thing where, where Christians under the guise of, of, of clinging to the traditions handed down to them, which are, are good traditions, that are actually being used contrary to the gospel. It's a place to, to recognize all things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. And, and ask yourself of the traditions in your church, what does this confess? What is the purpose of this? And, and where did it come from? And then you get to recognize the traditions are good and they're supposed to be there. They, they actually knit together. They point to Christ and that's important. But if they are being used contrary to the very things that they're supposed to be giving, they're not helping. They're, they're, they're in fact harming. Right. Exactly. <clears throat> if these traditions, which can be good in and of themselves, or can be good in a number of different ways, if they're not actually beneficial or if they're doing detriment to the, to the neighbor, um, then at the very least, uh, you should probably take some time to reevaluate. Hmm. And Let's see if five the, minutes. Uh, and see if a real uh, a real offense is is being caused. I like it. Let's take five minutes and do what you want to do. Mark. No, seven, I don't want to do anything. You don't want to do fine. fine. Because no, I thought I thought your Corbon. Uh, my brain was off. I thought your Corbon section was after fourteen, which it oh, is. Okay. We already talked about that. Um, okay. But no, because fourteen <clears throat> through um, twenty three leads up to the Syrophoenician woman. And we'll, we'll talk right. about that next time because we got the, what defiles a person, what makes somebody unclean. And then immediately we've got a concrete, actual real life example of mm. clean and unclean um, that Mark puts forward there. So I think, I think that's a, a good place to stop All right. is my guess. I don't know. It seems anticlimactic, but cool. We out. <laughs>